Welcome in everyone and welcome back perhaps. Today is a day of epic news. We've seen a lot of information flowing about the fresh start servers. The devs uh, frequently ask questions where they're answering uh, players questions and concerns about these fresh start servers. I've already covered both videos here on this channel and this is a third video today which is a rarity. So welcome back everyone who has already been subscribed here. You're amazing and that's what you get for subscribing. But if you're new, my name is Brian and welcome in. This is my new world channel where I talk about New World. I cover the news, guides, and so much more. And if you feel like these videos earn it, hitting that subscribe button is a great way of coming back and making sure you're in the loop with all the changes that are going on. Now, this is going to be a little bit longer of a post. This is the dev blog post. If you want to read it for yourself, links in the description, no judgment. Um, I am dyslexic, so, so occasionally uh, things will be misspoken um, and not on purpose. It's just a part of how my brain um fails to function from time to time but if anybody out there is also dyslexic sound off in the in the chat uh, we'll untie ourselves at some point anyway territory management in new world has a number of facets all of which are monitoring and evaluating while we have a lot more changes planned to come today we want to break down some changes that we're looking to implement for part one of the territory management revamp the rewards currently the reward for territory management functions as follows companies own territories and set tax rates Players spend due activities in territories and provide taxes that are at the set rates that goes to the ledger. The ledger pays out to the company that owns the territory at a set interval. Now, there are a lot of good things about the system that we feel, and it's time that it, some of these things need to change due to changes in the game since the system was originally designed. Some examples are moving between towns is easier, transferring items is easier, um, being able to tra uh, ta uh, travel, travel, you know, it is what it is, uh, because they were to do the Azoth cost is uh, capped at 20. They made it easier to store uh, items in a single town and housing uh, chests have been doubled and the trading post all experience has been streamlined, linking all trading posts together. So originally in the design, players were more spread out, selling resources mostly at the trading post in territories where they were collecting them. With the changes made into even more easily transfer items between towns, players are primarily congregating in Everfall and Windsward to sell these resources, resulting in higher income in these centralized territories. Since the input of these systems has changed, it's also time that we change the outputs. We've spent a lot more time going over the data and the coin rewards for the territories, and we wanted to share some of it with you guys. We took a look at the total coin reward for territories across the worlds in New World and found some distinct universal patterns. The biggest takeaway is that the Windsward and Everfall are the most valuable territories to hold in terms of coin payout on a weekly across all worlds. With all that in mind, here are some of our initial thoughts on how territory management could improve. We want to have more evenly distributed, distributed uh, coin that is the current uh, flowing through Everfall and Windsward. We want to make a redistributable uh, coin reward from Everfall and Windsward to other territories to make them more valuable. We want incentive uh, to incentivize good territory management, aka leveling up the stations, defending the territory from invasions, and we feel as if players will always have some territories that will be more appealing than others, and that is the healthy part of the game. Rather than fight against that, we would like to see a more equitable distribution of coin rewards from territories, and we're looking to accomplish that in the, with these future goals. Distribute gold between all territories more equitably so that the owners of Everfall and Windsor don't run away in power. Distribute gold to smaller towns to make them more valuable and have more territories worth fighting for. Give territory owners strong incentives to level up and maintain town levels. To reach these goals, we will be making a few changes. On the higher population servers, Windsward and Everfall account for approximately 20% of all coin payouts from these territories, so 40% in total. We'd like to introduce a system that adjusts each of them closer to 12.5% of the total payout. We will pull all the income earned across all territories to on a world and distribute a percentage of it for each governing company. The percentage amount is based on the territory and its town level, and to that end, the percent of coin paid out will be tiered as followed. So you can kind of see here, uh, like Brightwood, and this is obviously level 39. You can look at the chart on the, the page if you want to go see. Level zero is going to be 0.25%, so pretty low in, in case. At level 39, Brightwood 10%, Brimstone Sands 12.5%, Cutlass Keys 5%, Everfall 12.5%, First Light 5%, Monarchs 10, Morningdale 5, Evanscale Reach 10, Reekwater 7.5, Restless Shore 5, Weaver's Fin 5, Windsward 12.5, and the total obviously being 100% of that payout. 
obviously the distribution based off the town level so you can kind of look at the chart and kind of get an idea of what that is but this is the incentive to have the town leveled up so that way you're investing in those those resources so that you can get the best payout possible now anyway let's continue on now you might be asking why are the percentage trending similar to the value of the current uh, coin rewards why not make the territories like gypsum kilns more valuable or distribute the rewards e equally simply put you the players have dedicated millions of hours into new world into your territory standing and the rewards reflect your time spent with windsward and everfall making them the primary market hubs on most worlds we expect them to remain the primary market hubs and continue to generate most of the taxes moving forward we will of course continue monitoring this and make changes if needed with these payouts for territories changing it follows that the upkeep costs should be reviewed as well uh, we have found two problems upkeep costs were not linear they would have breakpoints that incentivize territory owners to not increase the town level to the detriment of all players in the world with these changes in territory revenue some territories in lower population worlds would not see profits at all past a certain town level so by making the upkeep scale linearly with the town rewards the incentive remains balanced through the levels making uh, it always the right choice to level up a territory to everyone's benefit to that end we're adjusting the upkeep cost as follows territory reward tier five percent current upkeep cost at level 39 is 190k now it's going to be 95k uh, percent of pre-patch level at 39 cost is 50 percent in this case so territory reward tier at 7.5 190 now it's going to be 142.50 10 percent 190 is still 190 and 12.5 percent 190 is going to have a 237 increase so that is essentially how that is being structured uh based off the tier again remembering kind of what tier you're kind of looking at in that chart these costs will now scale linearly with the town level as an example for 10 percent reward tier territories brightwood monarchs bluffs ebenskill reach these are the new upkeep costs town level one current uh is 200 and new is going to be 9500 uh five current is 600 20 uh, 800 500 and then so on and so forth until you reach that point where it is at level 39 and 90. again this is at the 10 percent which is maintaining that 100 percent and it looks like basically the lower levels are going to be a little bit more costly but it's going to scale back into exactly what it is currently at this time now finally they've locked all tax rates for all territories to the following housing tax adjusted from 0.1 min to one percent max to one percent both min and max so housing tax is just going to be one percent crafting tax adjusted from 0.5 x min to 3 x max to 0.5 x both min and max so that's a reduction in crafting fees and cost refining tax adjusted from 0.5 min to uh, 0.3 max just 0.5 both min and max trade tax adjusted from 2.5 percent to 25 percent max to 2.5 percent both min and max We've been looking at the data for around coin payouts for territories and feel confident that this will bring rewards of ownership to the top tier territories down slightly while increasing the value of other territories proportionally. The intended result is that on a current and new world, the balance of coin distributed weekly is more equitable across the number of companies versus the current uh, congestion that we see today. Thank you all for your feedback and you provide regardless of territories. This is the first of a few revisions that we have coming to improve territory management. Regarding the frequently asked questions, I am in a uh, company that owns Windsor. Does this new model mean owning it will no longer be as lucrative? yes that is intended some territory rewards are too far out of line with the others again due to the initial design components of the system changing the output should change as well to balance the territory rewards that what this means is that there will be still more income to hold on certain territories versus other territories but the previously under, undervalued territories will become more valuable to hold we are hoping to balance the value of holding territories with this change. If your alliance and your company currently owns Windsward and First Light, you'll be making approximately 24.7 of the coin distributed throughout the territory payouts each week. In this new system, you'll be making 17.5%. I see Brimstone Sands as a higher territory tier in this model. Will these change over time? The system also allows us to adjust whatever new territory is released or if uh, trends emerge uh, in the game. As you can see with the additional brimstone sands in the chart, we will monitor the results and these changes and update the percentages as needed. Now, why are these changes coming now? While we have the, uh, while we have been working uh, for a while and we wanted to ensure the system was in place before Fresh Start Worlds, 
We have heard you on the income and in, from territories such as Everfall and Winsford earn by owning companies feels like they put those companies significantly ahead of other players. By introducing this system before Fresh Start Worlds, we hope that we can make an initial territory scramble more equitable. It was obvious that we uh, that if we did not make these changes in time, owning Winsward and Everfall would become a significant advantage for the first few weeks while higher level territories wanted for more player traffic. Uh, again, they're in the process of translating that as a part of that. And they're saying this is part one. Now, this is kind of where we transition into my thoughts. Uh, so welcome everybody to the Brian thoughts section of this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed the information so far. Personally speaking, when it comes to territory control and management, I would love to see PVE have some value, not the whole kit and caboodle. I don't want to sit here and discount all the PVE players, PVP players, excuse me, but PVE, I think is a valuable asset that this game is sleeping on in terms of territory management. Imagine being able to score points and undermine and do these kind of things in these systems by just being out in the open world or running the dungeons or, you know, doing whatever it is that we do in the open world itself. I'd love to see more incentive brought in now again like i said and i put out a video on this on the channel way back in the day if you want to check the discussions playlist but i'd love to see essentially where the like how they have a weekly payout have whatever we're doing in the game account as points for that territory for the faction and then ultimately each and every week there's kind of a score that goes out and territories get distributed and maybe like there's a war to kind of determine comedy versus company or, so, or something of that nature I'd like to see some kind of uh, flexibility in that regards. Namely, I guess that comes from my Final Fantasy XI background because in Final Fantasy XI it was all PvE anyway and you would just go out and kill monsters and level up and based off the experience that you would get in the zone, uh, that would actually count for points towards, you know, you controlling that zone overall. Obviously, there's ways that you can break that. Obviously, we've seen all kinds of things within Final Fantasy XI where you would basically kind of queue up all on Sunday to try and take over a zone. Uh, which had had added perks and had it added, added travel costs and re I mean reduction in travel costs and more, but I don't know. I'd like to see some experimentation in that territory management um, is an interesting piece of this game that not a lot of people get to take part of. And it's kind of funny in regards to the distribution of wealth uh, <laughs> because you always see kind of more people like uh, arguing against it, but here it seems to be coming into play and um, maybe it's going to make the experience a little bit more fair overall. But those are my just thoughts. We'll have to wait and see how this gets both implemented, how it's received. Uh, and, uh, and the ownership of Everfall and Windsward have continually been the key areas to own that's where all the money and wealth is generated right now and being able to have this spread out a little bit more i think might make more interesting maps and whatnot anyway guys thanks so much for your time hopefully you guys enjoyed the litany and the the onslaught of videos today i appreciate you um if you feel like it earns it that like button is a great way to help it out help these videos out in the algorithm uh sharing subscribing and checking out the podcast are also excellent things that you guys can do uh, join us over on Twitch on Fridays. Links in the description where we play New World as a community, talk about the game in the future and so much more. So hopefully we'll catch you on those. And without further ado, guys, I think YouTube's got a couple of videos that it recommends for you to check out over here. And um, if you want to hang out with the channel and check out these videos, awesome. If not, hopefully I'll see you in my next video. But until then, take care.